Welcome to FlyQ EFB. This quick video will show you most of the basics of using the app. Let's go over what you see on the screen first. Most of the screen is covered by the map, as you'd expect. The top section of the display has a search box, some icons for things that we'll talk about a little bit later, status indicators, and so on. Below the top area is a bar that we call the gauge bar. The gauge bar shows you GPS altitude, ground speed, track, and so on. You can configure those gauges to be anything you like. On the left-hand side is a vertical bar, which we call the map bar, that controls things like which layers are on the map, if the aircraft is centered or not, if you're in track-up mode, if you're in 3D mode, and so on. Using the map is very straightforward. You simply take your finger, you can move the map to the left, to the right, up and down. You notice it's very quick, very clear. If you take two fingers, you can pinch in, you can pinch out, zoom in. You can take your same two fingers, rotate the map around, and so on. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. You'll notice that there's a series of icons in what we call the tab bar that lets you jump from major function to major function. Right now, the blue icon that's lit up is the map icon. If you move all the way over to the left, you see airports. So everything about airports is under there. Everything about weather is under the second icon. Flight planning is the third. Then maps. Then there is a multi-page scratch pad. And finally, a way to look at all of your procedures. Normally, this tab bar automatically hides itself. So it gets out of your way and you can focus on the map or the approach plate or something important. But when you tap anywhere on the map or any other major page, the tab bar will appear for about six seconds. If you move the map off center and you want to have the aircraft icon repositioned into the middle, on that left map bar, you can click the second icon down that looks like a targeting site and the screen repositions itself. Right now we're in what's called north up mode. If you prefer to be in track up mode, the button below the one we just clicked, this is the button that looks like a compass, tap that. And now the aircraft gets repositioned towards the bottom of the screen and the map is rotated into your direction of flight. The button at the very top of the map bar on the left, that looks like a stack of papers, is what controls which layers are on the map. Let's tap that. Right now we have a base map of sectionals. You can also have an IFR low like this, or an IFR high map. In addition to the base map, you can mix and match any other layer. Right now, the flight plan layer is on. We can turn on, say, fuel prices. Uh, we can turn on radar, satellite, maybe METARs and TAFs. Green is good, meaning that it's VFR weather conditions. It turns on winds aloft, air mets and sig mets, TFRs, TAWs, traffic, course line rings, whatever else you want to do, even a search and rescue grid. If you want to know more information about a given airport, there's a few different ways to do it. One is to jump into the search box at the very top left-hand corner of the app. Just click in there. And let's say I want to search for Seattle Tacoma. I know that the ident is SEA, so I type SEA, hit search, and up pops all the things that match it. So Seattle Tacoma pops up. We immediately see that the icon for this airport is blue, meaning it's controlled. You see exactly what the runways look like. These are not generic icons. You know that there's a green button that says VFR, meaning that the weather conditions are VFR. Most of the basic information that you need to fly to the airport is already on the screen. Distance, runway, TPA, most of your frequencies, fuel prices, and so on. On the right-hand side of the Seattle-Tacoma row, you see a series of four icons. The upper left icon is a map button that jumps a map immediately to the airport. If you want to go direct to that airport, you click the button to the right of that that looks like the direct to symbol. Below direct to is a button that says plus FP. That means add it to my flight plan. You can sequence it wherever you like. And to the left of plus FP, four airports that have approach procedures like Seattle, Tacoma. Click that and it jumps you immediately to the procedures. Now, you can also, however, tap on the map and see similar information. For example, let's put the map back into track up mode. And if I double tap on Seattle, Tacoma on the map, this pops up. Same basic information. Now, however, I'm going to click just anywhere in that Seattle-Tacoma row and show you the information that we see for an airport. On one screen, without having to hit a lot of little buttons or tabs or anything, you get the elevation, the TPA, you see a satellite view and an FA diagram view, which in this case have wind arrows on them telling you that the surface winds are seven knots hitting to the southeast. If I take my finger and just scroll it up a little bit, I see all of my frequencies, my runways, including crosswinds, nav aids, and so on. If I want to know weather about this airport, I simply hit the second tab 
next to general that says weather. And in just a couple of seconds, you see the current temperature, a local, a regional, and the national radar. Again, flick my finger up a little bit, and I see METARS and TAFs. Keep flicking a little more, and you see winds aloft. You even get a Lockheed Martin or a Duox briefing. One of my favorite features, though, is on the METARS and TAFs, if you want to read those a little bit bigger, just tap anywhere in there, and you see them much larger, much easier to see. Let's take a look at approach procedures. Next to the weather tab is the procedures tab. If I were to pick a particular procedure, doesn't particularly matter which, I see that on the map. If that's not the one I want, I can simply flick it left and right, like this. Now in this particular one, we're geo-referenced, which means that the aircraft icon is superimposed on the approach plate. You can zoom in with your fingers, zoom out, and so on. Now let's put the system into split screen mode so we can look at an approach plate and maybe a map at the same time. There's a button in the upper left next to where we typed in SEA. I'll tap that. And now the system is in split mode. We see the airport information on one side, and we see the approach plate on the other. If I tap anywhere on one of the sides, a toolbar pops up, and it lets me pick a different item. For example, now I can pick maps. So I'm putting the map on the left-hand side, and I have an approach plate on the right-hand side. Again, I can just flip through my approach plate like this. One of the things that I can do is I can take that approach plate and I can superimpose it on the map by hitting the button that's on the approach procedure tab uh, on the upper right side. I tap there and look at this. So in that way, you can put different procedures on the map. In fact, if I flip through the procedures now on the right hand side, watch what happens on the left. Those change as well. Maps can be either 2D or 3D in FlyQ EFB. So on the left-hand side of the screen, if I took, take a look at the icon that looks like a cube, tap the cube, and the system goes into 3D mode. I can have, since it's a split screen system, I can have a 3D map on one side, and maybe on the other side, just tap anywhere, and then pick map, and I can look at a 2D map all at the same time. This can be other types of information, of course, as well. Planning a flight is very straightforward, very simple. If I go back up to my search box at the top, I can type in my IDENTS of my flight, for example, Seattle Tacoma, SEA, then space, and then maybe SFO. If I want to just draw a direct line between those two, that's all I need. But if I wanted to fly in, say, Victor Airways, I put one more space, put a V for Victors, now hit search. It takes the system a few seconds to generate the plan, plan is going to be wind optimized flight plan. So not only will it put all the points of my flight plan right on the nav log, so I don't have to compute them, it also gives me the best altitude to get me there as quickly as possible. So here's my flight plan on one side of the screen and the map on the other side of the screen. The last thing I'd point out is in the upper right corner of the screen, there are a number of indicators, four of them. One that says GPS, it's green. A green button that says weather, and then two that say ADSB. You can use those very quickly to know whether the devices that you've attached are working properly. As you can imagine, they turn red when they're not. This has been a quick overview of FlyQ EFB. There's quite a lot more to look at too. This should get you started. Thank you.